We're in the year 2020, and these cycles, they come and go. And uh, things are definitely getting very, very interesting from the start of this year to where we are now. And it's just for you to talk to your audience, the people who have come along specially to hear you today about what's going on in Australia, how they can get active, and the bigger picture. We've got about 10 minutes for you to lay that out. I know it's not much, Max, but over to you, man. Well, it's it's interesting how how to get active in this country. I mean, you know, you're not going to get any remedy from the political system. Well, we've we've tried that. I mean, I've always said non-compliance is the best way to go. People don't understand how to do that. They think, well, if we don't comply, then we're not going to have roads and all the food's going to stop flowing. All that. No, it, it's not about that. It's simply not not doing it according to government standards. Just doing things our own way. Something unique we've got happening here. I'm actually going to mention. Uh, a friend of mine and a land situation that he's putting together. The Aboriginal people in this country or the original people in this country are in a very unique position in the world because um, in in the regards to Australia, this country was never legitimately colonised. It was never legitimately conquered. The Crown doesn't actually have any right to any land in Australia. The government, the Crown, the Queen... They don't have any right to the land. And certain members of the Aboriginal community have kind of pulled a swift one on the government. And they've, uh, a friend of mine who's, who's a pretty high-ranking lawman in the Aboriginal community he was thinking about this. It took him about 20 years to do it, and he's, he's thought about it. You know, how can, we, how can we get the Australian government to recognise us as a people and recognise they have no claim to the land and give us our freedom, and how can we get them to pay for it? You know, that was his plan. So what he did, he... he Got a treaty. He he went around and treaty with all the tribes, and we got they got a treaty. They got their skin. The Australian Aboriginals have got a skin where all the treaties, all the tribes have signed it. So it's their treaty, and it goes back since before federation. It's very old. This skin, it's a couple hundred years old, and uh, they've all signed it. All the different tribes have signed it. So they basically approached the government of Julia Gillard and said, "Okay, well, we've got this treaty here of all our people, and you've got your people and your constitution, and there's two of us here, and." We need to sit down and work this out, you know. And Julia Gillard saw it as a great opportunity to bring the Australian people in under the Constitution and to recognise them as being, so we're all one big happy family, you know. So they put out this whole recognition thing, the Recognition Act, they called it, where they're going to recognise that there's two people here in the country, two lots of people, and we need to bring it all together into one lot of people, you know. And it was this great thing the government did, the Recognition Act, and all the Australians went for it. Meanwhile, the Aboriginal people had planned all this. They even designed the R that they were going to use, you know, so they got it all ready. So the, and then they went and picked up all the T-shirts, the recognition T-shirts from the government, gave them all out to people. The government was really excited. Oh, yeah, here you come, quick, take them all out. Let's push this, you know, little stickers and badges and stuff. And they just took all the T-shirts off and they, they screen printed a circle with a cross over it, a cross through it over the top of the R. And they put little circles with cross through them over the top of the recognition badges so that no recognition, you know, stop recognition. And um, so just played it all against the government. And then what the government did with the Recognition Act was they acknowledged that there are two mobs here. There's there's two lots of law in this land. And they offered the Australian Aboriginal people the opportunity to come under the Constitution. So the Aboriginal people stood up and said, well, thank you for recognising that there are two uh, two mobs here, no contracts. We don't want to be under your constitution. Thank you for making that legal distinction. And so now this guy has set up, he's got a 3,000 acre block that he's setting up under full Aboriginal law and the Crown has no jurisdiction whatsoever on that land. By their own admission that there are two mobs here through the Recognition Act. So anybody in Australia who really wants to establish freedom from this system can simply treaty with the Australian Aboriginal people. They're now in a position where they can do that. And if you can get yourself adopted into the tribe, you can now be completely free of the Westminster system, the Westminster legal system on while you're on country in Australia, which is what you call a country. You are on country. You're not in Australia. You are on country. When you are in Australia, you are like it's being in the state of Queensland. I once had a police officer say to me, you know, he's doing something. He said, I said, what do I have to do? He said, well, you're in the state of Queensland. When, you, when you're in the state of Queensland, you've got to abide by the laws of the state of Queensland. And I said to him, well, what is, what is the state of Queensland? You know, I, I don't understand what a state of Queensland is. I'm actually in a state of confusion at your claim that I'm in a state of Queensland.
because a state of Queensland is a mental state. When you're in the country, when you're in Australia, you are in the mental state of being in Australia. You're not in Australia, you're on country because this is country because it's not sea, so it's country. You know, so it's the having that mentality and having that that notion of where you are and what you are. So we're in a really unique position in Australia that the Australian people can now treaty with the Australian Aboriginals and they can thereby remove themselves from the jurisdiction of the Westminster system. And, you know, you've got to be prepared to stand in that and know what you're doing to do it. But that's really um, what they've set up, the, the original people have set up in this country by this recognition act, the way they've played it, which was an extremely clever move by them. And like I said, it's a very unique position in this country because when, when, when Governor Philip came here, as soon as he took seven steps up the beach and put that flag in the ground and claimed Australia to be part of the England, he, he broke the law. You can't do that. That's like someone walking up to the shore of France, taking seven paces onto the shore of France, putting a flag in the ground and saying they claim Europe as being part of the crown. You know, what about the people in Poland and Denmark and all the other places? You, know, you can't just do that in France and say that you own Europe. Well, when they came here to Australia, there were 30 nations already here, 30 original people nations already here. You can't just walk seven paces up the beach and say, claim, claim that you own the country under British law because this isn't Britain. This is Australia, and there's already a people here, and it's already been established that terra nullis was void. There was no terra nullis here. There was no no people here. It was not uninhabited. There were 30 nations here, and you've shown that and proven that by the Recognition Act, so you've shot yourself in the foot, and you've shown that the Australian government doesn't have a leg to stand on simply by the inaction of the Recognition Act themselves. So this has all been planned by the original people to basically free the country <clears throat> if the Australian people can, can realise what's going on here and simply treaty with the elders and treaty with the original people. So that's the way out in this, in this country, brother, and if we can do that, Perhaps we can set some sort of an example for the rest of the world. Oh, that sounds really, really awesome, Max. It's amazing. There was yeah. a friend of mine who, who actually lost his house because he didn't pay his mortgage and taxes and that, and they really screwed him for what he was doing. So he just said, okay, and he handed his keys back to the government, and then when they came to repossess the house, they couldn't because an Iraqul guy, an Aboriginal guy had moved into the house, and he said, well, hang on, this is Iraqul country. If you're claiming you can repossess the house, you have to claim that you own any of this country to begin with, and they couldn't. And he, he managed to stay in the house, but they were watching it. They waited. He went out one day. Unfortunately, he went out. And as soon as he went out to the shop, they ran in, changed the locks and repossessed the house because he left the property. But he was there for six months and they couldn't do a thing, couldn't kick him out because they can't prove any ownership of any land in Australia. The government does not have a single leg to stand on under their own recognition act. So it's an, it's an incredible milestone, brother. And that's what the Australian people need to become aware of. Well, Max, I want to thank you for joining 